Hi, and welcome back to Ask a Monk. Sorry I've been busy lately. I um, haven't had a chance to put any Ask a Monk videos up. I've um, been trying to get ready to go to Thailand, where I'll be spending the next two months. I'm leaving at the end of this month, and I'll be there until around Christmas. Anyway, um, next question comes from Inside is Void who asks, When I get set to meditate, should I try to seclude myself from things that might distract me, like keeping pets out of the room or switching off devices that make sounds? Or should I allow those things should I allow those things in order to overcome them in meditation? Thanks. I think there are cases where you want to avoid certain things. Uh, pets I think would be one of them. Um, be because of the you know the conscious interaction and the um, the persistence of 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 the phenomenon the the real point here is that um you you it's 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 how comfortable you are because in the end there should be no difference between our formal practice and our practice in daily life formal practice is just that it's formal it's a way of um of formalizing the act of being mindful so the benefit of it is is it's that it it's easier it's more intense um it's like taking things out of the the environment so that you can do laboratory experience experiments and the experiment in the laboratory is much more pure it's um, really the only way to train yourself um, in 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 the, the principles that we're, we're we're talking about here is to take yourself away from those things now that that really only applies to those things that are going to be a distraction in your meditation it sounds like like a clock ticking or um, uh, air conditioning or or even external sounds outside um, most of the sounds that we we have to deal with cars going by or whatever don't need to be a distraction obviously they can become a part of the meditation it's where it gets to the point where it's going to it's going to interrupt your meditation and and um, you know, become it's going to take you away from your 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 stomach rising so a, a cat crawling over you and clawing you can be an object of meditation but the intensity of it and and the conscious interaction will will necessarily be a, a diversion i think what you'll find more is that when you try to avoid um certain phenomena that they actually distract you more in life and it becomes an obsession and that becomes something that blocks you in the practice uh, for instance people who try to mm, take a clock out of the room uh, or <clears throat> or you know remove certain sounds will find that they then can never meditate with those sounds uh, when i first started everyone we were always you know trying to get the clock out of the room put it under a pillow or so on i had an alarm clock someone gave me and i was you know sticking it under a pillow and then i could still hear it and then so i have a blanket on top of that until i could no longer hear it because I found that I was walking, when I did my walking meditation, I'd be walking in sync with the clock all the time. And when I did my sitting meditation, I'd be breathing in sync or, 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 or however. Um, but then the problem came when I moved to another room with a couple of other meditators and there was a clock in the room and I had no opportunity to remove it. Um, it, it drove me crazy because it, 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 got, it had gotten worse because of my inability to accept it. Until finally, I just gave up, and 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 you know, if I was walking in sync with the clock, I was walking in sync with the clock, and eventually was able to overcome it. Uh, and, and that's obviously very important in the meditation practice to overcome our attachments as opposed to to, to feeding them. So um, things like pets, people, music, um, I would I would recommend all of these things should be. Um, removed from your meditation practice. So if there are people talking in the room, that's incredibly difficult to meditate because you're obviously thinking about what they're talking. If there's music, uh, that's quite difficult to meditate because your mind gets into this rhythm and 
you it, it's kind of like um, uh, it's a placebo or it's a um, it's a stimulus and it keeps you happy it keeps you calm it doesn't allow you to deal with the uh, the natural state of of the mind um, pets obviously as I said can can be a distraction as well so apart uh, th those are the few specific things the the, the more extreme sort of uh, stimulants but as far as uh, noises and finding a quiet place I would recommend against it in fact I would recommend trying to practice in places where you wouldn't normally do when I'm in an airport I'll be going to Thailand when I'm in the airport I'll do walking meditation and sitting meditation even with incredibly loud noise even with people talking um, and and you know, vacuuming and, and car uh, vehicles going by or whatever because you can pull these things into your meditation practice yeah, that, so so from in most cases I would say you know just let it be let the noise uh, become a part of your meditation as opposed to letting it build up the um, the aversion to it okay so hope that helps